Hey, yo, we are here. Week 13, starting situation with your boy Justin Henry here talking fantasy football on the Justin Henry Show. NBA is soon to come, but we got to talk about week 13. I know it's crunch time. It's crunch time. I'm getting gritty. I feel like I'm getting in, the, in with your lineups with you guys, and we're going to make these playoffs, guys. Um, before you do, make sure you guys subscribe if you're new to the channel. Drop your comments in at the end of the show if I don't get to it. But, um, yeah, I got a lot to talk about today and not a lot of time to do. It'll be an hour episode today. It's the Justin Henry Show. You're watching the Justin Henry Show on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Make sure you follow on all social media platforms. What's going on, guys? Your boy Justin Henry here, and I'm going to be rocking through this entire Week 13 slate. Guys, I'm going to get to some questions right now, but after that, I'm going to lock in and get on these games. So uh, first two, which two, should I, which two should I start at running back out of Aaron Jones, ETN, Sanders, and with Chase possibly returning this week? Should I start him and Tyreek Hill and throw Watson in the flex? That is a lot of information. I'm going to get to it, obviously. At the top of my list is still ETN and Aaron Jones. Uh, and yeah, Chase should be good to go this week if he plays. Thoughts on Josh Allen or Trevor Lawrence for this week? I'm going Josh Allen. I'm not benching Josh Allen uh, for Trevor. Even though Trevor Lawrence has been playing good, I'm still not benching Josh Allen. Mahomes or Tua this week? Y'all saw Tua on the screen cap, but I'm still going with Mahomes in a game that they must win against the Bengals, even though the matchup's not there. Tua has a tough matchup as well against the Niners. Uh, I'm going with Mahomes. Please, I need you. Let's go, LV. Uh, start to Rashad White. Pierce and ETN. Give me uh, Rashad White and ETN. Even though Pierce is a decent matchup, uh, he just doesn't catch the rock. And if they don't score a touchdown with him, his value is just not there. Start one Rashad White, Jeff Wilson Jr., and Najee. I'm going to lean away from Najee because he's injured. I'm probably going to go with Jeff Wilson here in a revenge game against the Niners. Rashad White is very close there on Monday night. Start three, Watson, Terry, C.D. Lamb, Sutton, or London. Give me Watson for the upside, C.D. Lamb. And I actually like Cortland Sutton a little bit this game for a floor. So uh, go ahead and get him in there. Terry is going to be a recommended bench uh, watching the games today, or when we talk about the games today. What's up, Justin? DFG, what's good? He said, Kamara, Mixon, Walker, Paul, uh, Pittman, Sutton, Watson. Start two running backs, two receivers, and a flex. Uh, yeah, so you're going to want to – we'll talk a little bit more about this, but go ahead and give me Walker and mix in uh, Kamara. I'll go ahead and bench this week just because of the whole situation that's been going on with him and a tough matchup against uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, for the receivers, I'm going to go with Sutton and Watson. Pittman has a tough matchup up against the Cowboys. Jets and Vikings defense uh, playing against each other. Give me the Vikings defense, uh, and I don't love it. I don't love either of those ones. Just picked up Seattle defense against the Rams. Uh, I think that's a great start. I just did that in my 12-man league, so good job. Noti Gang Timo, what's good? What's good? Guys, I see the questions flooding in. I am going to get to these games, all right? This is the last one I'm going to answer for right now, but I'm going to get to the games. I will come back to the questions after 3.02 and answer as many as I can before the show's over, but I got to get to these games, guys. Uh, yo, trade deadline just ended today. Rob, what's good? Uh, he said, Dak, Saquon, JT, JJ, AJ, Schultz, Olave, Ayuk, Jeff Wilson. Looking good, man. Um, only thing I can see is maybe your, your tight end. But Schultz, I mean, tight end's a graveyard. So I'll talk about an option there if you guys missed it yesterday. All right, let's get into these games, guys. And we got to talk about them. Obviously, this is a really big slate. Only two teams on by. Uh, Cardinals and Panthers are on a bye this week. So make sure to get the Cardinals and the Panthers players out of your lineups. Uh, obviously, you guys are watching the show. You guys know what you're doing. So go ahead and get those guys out of your lineups. Uh, when it comes to the first game, Bills and Pats, and obviously the the – Bill Belichick motto is to take away the best weapon for a team, right? So Josh Allen is the best weapon for the Bills, but it's hard to do that. Uh, 43 points, so I expect this to be a lower scoring game. Ball control for the Patriots is how they'll do that. Uh, give me Ramondre Stevenson in this game. I think he plays well against his Bills defense. Uh, and then also, I think that these Bills receivers, right? The Bills are one of the worst. You know, they're not. Uh, they're a bottom 10 team against wide receivers. Jacoby Myers, uh, Devontae Parker, Nelson Aguilar. It's just tough to put which one is going to be the best receiver receiver for the week. So I'd stay away from Patriots receivers if I could in a lower scoring matchup. Uh, obviously, you're not sitting Stephon Diggs for the Bills. You're firing up Josh Allen, even though it's not a great matchup on paper. He uses his legs and has a chance to get you that floor that you like to see. Um, but I would sit Gabe Davis in this matchup. And the Patriots are pretty ball dominant. You see it's a lower scoring game. Thursday night football on a short week. I don't see Gabe Davis having one of those splash plays against the Patriots defense who's going to, they're going to try to limit those big plays. So when it comes to the Bills side, fire up Josh Allen. I'd stay away from like Devin Singletary, James Cook, this running game until it gets a little bit more ironed out. Uh, they're going to lean on the run, but so are the Pats. And so 
To me, I, Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen on the Bills side are really the only comfortable plays. It wouldn't surprise me if Dawson Knox got a couple red zone looks. If he scores or not, that's a different thing. But it would not surprise me if Dawson Knox got a couple red zone looks this game. All right. On to Steelers and Falcons. Uh, Steelers and Falcons, this should be a good game for the Steelers, who saw a pretty nice emergence from Kenny Pickett. He looks a lot better, um, especially on that Monday night game. It's a short week for the Steelers on the road. Uh, but Kenny Pickett is a fire up this game, as well as George Pickens. He is definitely a fire up. A fringe player, fringe start, Deontay Johnson. Looks like he could have a role in this game as well, as the Falcons are one of the worst teams at stopping wide receivers. So I do expect um, the Steelers receiving core to play play well and do well. Kenny Pickett should have a couple touchdowns. I think this is a two touchdown game for Kenny Pickett in a spot against Atlanta, even though the total is a lower total. So uh, as far as the run game, there's a lot going on there. Najee Harris is banged up. I don't expect Najee Harris to play, but I'm not a doctor. Um, but here we, but there's three other options there. We saw Benny Snell and Anthony McFarland, who probably somebody picked up Benny Snell in your league. Um, I don't think either of those is the guy. Jalen Warren is just coming off of injury, got in a full practice today. I expect Jalen Warren to lead this back field and if Najee Harris is out for an extended period of time Jalen Warren is the guy I would want to have in my lineups I just picked him up in the league and I think he's a good pickup moving forward for the fantasy playoffs he's had a role for this team and now he has a position to be in a starters role while Najee Harris is out uh, one of the fantasy doctors I do trust on Twitter mentioned that it could be a two-game absence for Najee Harris it seems about right um, and then when it comes to the Falcon side of the ball oh with Pat Fryer me too you can get him in there he's just a really low floor play all most tight ends right now outside of the top five that I've mentioned many times on this show are low floor plays. It kind of sucks, but if you got Pat Fryermuth, I guess he's a start. Like you have to start him at this point. There's not a lot of other options. When it comes to the Falcons side of the ball, uh, Steelers defense is playing a lot better as of late, especially getting TJ Watt back, uh, the return of uh, Mika Fitzpatrick. So the Steeler defense is playing right. But I would go with Drake London. Uh, the Steelers have been giving up a lot of a lot of points recently to wide receivers. We saw Michael Pittman have a pretty good day against them. Um, but yeah, go ahead and fire up Drake London as a Hail Mary flex type play if you're looking for other options. Um, but then you also have Cordero Patterson, who should be used in the passing game, in the run game. Even though he's splitting work with Tyler Algier right now, still a good play. Mariota is just a back-end super flex play if needed. That's really the only Falcons options that I'd want to talk about on this team for now. Uh, Packers and Bears. When you talk about Packers, Bears, obviously Aaron Rodgers dealing with an injury right now, uh, but this is a get right spot for the Packers offense. And so one of the things I think we'll see with this Packers team is that they also have a bye coming up week 14. So it wouldn't surprise me if Jordan Love comes in after the bye at some point, whether it's 15 or 16. I do think he gets involved. But for now, we got A-Rodge. We got a terrible Chicago defense right now. Christian Watson is a fire up, as well as the run game. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. AJ Dillon is a is back in flex territory. It looks like they're trying to get him involved. It would not surprise me if Aaron Jones sees a reduction in, in touches as the fantasy playoffs emerge. So AJ Dillon to fire up in 12 man leagues or deeper. I'm not saying eight, 10, but if you're thin at the running back position and you need a start, it's not a sexy start. And it's not a it's not a high floor play. AJ Dillon is a very low floor play if he doesn't get a touchdown, but it looks like they're trying to get him involved. The run game is going to be there against the Chicago Bears, one of the worst teams at stopping the run. I can see both running backs having a decent day. I'd stay away from Alan Lazard, even in a plus matchup against the Bears. And I'm in Randall Cobb is like a deeper league PPR play, 14 man at best. And then for the Bears side of the ball, it all depends on if Justin Fields is playing or not. They have a bye week 14 as well, so it wouldn't be surprising to see Justin Fields sit. Um, to me, it's, that's probably the likely scenario. I've talked about that on the show before. I could see him out through the bye week, which makes total sense to get him right. Um, but if he does play, you got to fire him up off of just the strength of his last games. I think they would limit his rushing slightly. It's not something that would be um, a terrible thing for his value. I just think that it would be a slight limitation to preserve his shoulder. Um, as far as throwing the ball, it's on his off shoulder, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, Chase Claypool is questionable coming into this matchup, and his team did just lose Darnell Mooney. So, like I said, it wouldn't be surprising for me if they sit Justin Fields not only through this game uh, and through the bye, but even, even further. So, uh, I am concerned about Justin Fields, and David Montgomery's value is kind of shaky this week as well against a stout pack, uh, Packers defense. So, um, if you have David Montgomery, you have to start him. He's probably going to be a 10 to 15 point play. I don't expect him to get a touchdown. But he's going to get you about 60, 80 yards rushing. He'll get you a couple dump-offs in the passing game, especially if Trevor Simeon starts. So 
To me, I'm probably fading most bears. David Montgomery's the play. And if Justin Fields plays, go ahead and get him in your lineups. Uh, low total, 43 and a half points. So I'm not expecting a whole lot of points there. Uh, Jaguars and Lions on deck next. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is a go against a terrible Detroit Lions defense. Go ahead and get Trevor Lawrence in your lineups. And then between Christian Kirk and Zay Jones, one of those receivers is going to do well. The problem is we haven't seen them both do well on the same week, which is kind of tough. It's been very limited throughout the year. So we've seen Jay, Zay Jones get hot. We've seen Christian Kirk get hot. Uh, get hot. So uh, to me, both of them are very dart throw type flex plays. Even Christian Kirk, who's had a, a pretty good season this far uh, so far this season for the Jags. If it was going to be either one of them, I would play Christian Kirk. Uh, Zay Jones is questionable this week. Uh, as far as Travis Etienne, he's a fire up. Uh, missed last game with injury. He's questionable to come in. I think he gives it a go. The Doug Peterson's talked about him going. Travis Etienne himself has said he's going to be a go. So as far as the Jags, I think that it's a it's uh, Travis Etienne is going to be okay. If you picked up Darrell Henderson or you picked up Jamichael Hasty, I'm not expecting too much out of those guys, even in a matchup against the Lions. And on the Lions side of the ball, it's this is a higher total. It's 51 points, so go ahead and fire up Jared Goff, Amon Ross, St. Brown. I'm, uh, there's no Jamison Williams, so if you're holding out hope for Jamison Williams this week, it'll have to be next week. He's not going to be playing in week 13. He's trending towards playing in week 14. We'll have to get an update on that, but don't put him in your lineups thinking he's coming back this week. Uh, DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams are both mid plays to me this week. I would prefer to play DeAndre Swift over Jamal Williams at this point. Jamal Williams, if he doesn't get a touchdown, uh, will hurt your team at, at some point. Uh, let's see. Jets and Vikings next up. Uh, next up, Jets and Vikings on the schedule. And uh, the Jets coming off of a strong win with Mike White as the starting quarterback. I can see him having a decent day. I don't expect a repeat of last week, what he did against the Bears. Uh, but this Vikings defense has given up some points to the quarterback position. So I can see Mike White being a super flex play. Not necessarily a starting top 12 quarterback this week, uh, but a super flex play this week. And Garrett Wilson against the Vikings defense that's given up uh, top 10 worst to the position. Uh, go ahead and get Garrett Wilson in your lineups, Elijah Moore in your lineups. And as far as the running backs go, Michael Carter was expected to be out with a high ankle injury. It turns out it was not so serious. Uh, so Michael Carter is a question mark coming into this week. We're not sure if he's going to be playing or not. But for those who picked up Bam Knight, Zonovan Knight, um, or you picked up Ty Johnson, just temper your expectations. It will be a committee. I'm not excited about any one of the Jets running back options heading into this week. For the Vikings side of the ball, it's a tougher matchup, but Justin Jefferson's matchup proof. Kirk Cousins has shown that he's damn near matchup proof, so go ahead and get both of those guys in your lineups. Uh, Dalvin Cook, I'm starting to get a little bit, you know, this is not a great matchup for him on paper, but I do think that the Vikings know they have to run the ball here in the second half of the season, so I expect him to get back into the lineups. You can't pull him for your lineup. Um, and TJ Hawkinson should have a pretty decent day. Jets do okay against the tight ends, but I expect TJ Hawkinson to be uh, serviceable as he has been. He's a top five tight end rest of the season. All right. Hopefully this is helpful, guys. If you're here on TikTok and you haven't subscribed to the YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm on every single day. I'm going to try to get to a few questions, but I got to get through these games and I have a very limited time today. So I'll come back to Giants and Commanders. Uh, I'm going to pump out some of these questions real quick that I have coming in from YouTube and from uh, TikTok. All right. First one, okay, choose for Lamb, Godwin, St. Brown, Stevenson, Chase, Amari, Evans, Mixon. You have a solid team, my man, and so you're going to have to go through and listen to some of these. That's a lot for me to go through and pick. I don't know if you can start receivers, running backs. Help me out a little bit there. Dial in the options if you can. Pickens, Watkins, or Burks at the flex. I like Christian Watson this week against the Bears. Get him in there. What's a realistic upgrade for Tony Pollard? If you're looking at a, a high upside uh, running back, too, I think that's the right territory, or a safe floor running back, too. Um, I think Tony Pollard right now is going to be more of a flex play unless something happens to Zeke Elliott he'll be a splash play every now and then but he's going to struggle some weeks start three Chase Williams Iuke and Smith we got to see if Mike Williams is playing this week if he's playing I go ahead and fire him up Devontae Smith will be the bench if he doesn't play then you already know it's Devontae Smith start white over Jimmy G uh, White over Jimmy G. Mike White over Jimmy G. It depends because Jimmy G is dealing with an uh, with an injury. I'll talk about him in just a minute. Is uh, Zonovan Knight worth the start? I don't think so. Prize picks parlays for Thursday Night Football. I'll drop them tomorrow. I'll drop them tomorrow. Uh, what should I trade Kamara for? I think you should hold Kamara if you have a winning record. If you have a losing record, make sure you get RB1 value for him. CMC or Stevenson? Give me CMC. Even though he's a little bit banged up, I still like him uh, over, over Stevenson this week. 
Foster or Conklin? Traylon or Jeff Wilson at the flex? I'm assuming that's what that means. Um, Foster, I would go with Foster Moreau, and then I would also go with Traylon Burks. Or I would go with Jeff Wilson for the floor. Traylon Burks, if you need a little bit of upside, but it's Jeff Wilson and Foster Moreau would be my two picks. Do I start Mike Evans this week? Absolutely. Even with uh, Lattimore there, we've seen him play well against Lattimore before. Uh, I would start Mike Evans over Pittman. I'm, I'm starting Mike Evans. I don't, I don't care about uh, the matchup. Garrett Wilson, Rashad White, or Pacheco. It would go Rashad White, Garrett Wilson, then Pacheco. Pacheco is going to be touchdown dependent, especially with the uh, addition of Melvin Gordon to the team. So give me Rashad White on Monday night. I'm 93 with Hertz, Barkley, ETN, Juju Lockett, Travis, Rashad White. Trust the process. Absolutely trust the process. This lineup looks good. Only thing I can see is you might need stronger receivers. Start three, JT Walker, Stevenson, Aaron Jones, and James Conner. Uh, out of these three options, I'm starting JT Walker and Stevenson. Pick one, Pollard, Jeff Wilson, Swift, or Pacheco. Out of these options, I'm going with Jeff Wilson against the Niners. Justin, help. My studs have been performing like duds. Sometimes it happens. Pick three, Taylor Walker, Barkley, and Cook. Give me Taylor Walker and Barkley this week. All right, last one before I get back into these games. Got Pittman, Montgomery for Mike Evans deal done. Good job. Start two this week, Evans versus Lattimore, Olave versus Tampa, or McLaurin versus uh, versus the Jets. Uh, you're still gonna go with you're gonna go with Evans. You're gonna go with Olave on the, both the Monday night guys. I feel like that's a good the that Giants matchup for the for the Commanders. Yeah, the Commanders got the Giants, not the Jets. Excuse me. Uh, that's gonna be tough sledding for uh, for Terry McLaurin. Mr. Lewis said Kenneth Walker or Aaron Jones in PPR. I'm going with Kenneth Walker even in PPR leagues. Good matchup for the Seahawks this week up against the Rams. They will be running the shit out of the ball. All right, back to the games. I said I was going to leave off on Commanders and Giants, so here we are. If you guys are here on the TikTok page, head over to the YouTube. Help me out. Subscribe on there. Um, I'm going to be going through the rest of the games here. Commanders and Giants uh, should be a lower scoring game sitting at 40 and a half points right now. Uh, for the commander side of the ball, I would caution on Taylor Heineke, even in super flex leagues. If he's like a questionable decision for you, I'd probably steer away. It's going to be a lower scoring game and a run focused game. So I definitely would get in Brian Robinson, even though the Giants have had one of the better defenses uh, throughout this entire season. So uh, that also means we're kind of fading Terry McLaurin a little bit here. Uh, Giants have been strong against wide receivers. It's not to where I would bench him just for a more of a dart throw. It's just I would temper my expectations. Or if you had really solid options, startable names like a DK Metcalf or somebody that's very questionable to that, I would take the other matchup as we talk about here moving forward. So uh, I'm not sold on a lot of the commander's options. I think that they might even lose this game, uh, even though they are un even though they're favored by two and a half against the Giants. On the Giants side of the ball, Daniel Jones is, is going to be a mid-tier QB2 super flex type quarterback. Saquon Barkley is a fire up. Washington's one of the bottom 10 teams against the run. Um, and then this also even with the, the offensive line injuries for the Giants. I'm still getting Saquon Barkley in the lineup. Expect some dump downs. When it comes to receivers for the Giants right now, Darius Slayton's been operating as the wide receiver one for this team, but we've seen over the last two weeks, Richie James has found the end zone in back-to-back -back weeks. Playing that Wandale Robinson role, uh, he's worth a dart throw in 14-man leagues or deeper. In 12-man, he's more of a, a watch and see. I give him one more week in 12-man leagues, especially if it's kind of shallow or you only start two or three receivers. Uh, but I do like Richie James as a pickup in deeper leagues, and he's somebody to monitor. He's just not somebody that I'm willing to throw in lineups if it's an eight-man, 10-man, even 12-man leagues. It's kind of stretching. Unless you just absolutely need receivers, he could be a go. All right, enough of that matchup. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, Antonio Gibson. I didn't talk about Antonio Gibson. To me, he's a mid-tier flex option. If you have better options, this team looks like uh, Brian Robinson is starting to get more dynamic. They're starting to involve him in the passing game. Uh, there's a lot There's a lot with Brian Robinson. It, it feels like they're trying to make him the featured back of this team. They're trying to make Brian Robinson the featured back. So um, I think that Antonio Gibson's role is starting to diminish. Brian Robinson's getting healthy. That's the guy they want moving forward. I would steer clear of Antonio Gibson unless I was in a 12, 14-man league uh, with shallow depth. Uh, Titans and Eagles. Titans and Eagles. Uh, we are... Uh, sitting Ryan Tannehill, this, this Eagles defense is one of the best in the league. The total sitting at 44 and a half points. This is going to be a Derrick Henry game for the Titans. They're going to focus on Derrick Henry. I would start, even though it's tough matchups, I would start Traylon Burks. He feels like uh, he's the number one receiver for this team now since he's come back from IR. And even though it's a tough matchup up against Slay, Bradbury, 
The Titans are going to have to throw the ball. They're probably going to be in a negative game script as the Eagles are probably going to be winning this game at some point throughout the game. Um, so he would be the only Titans receiver that I would throw in there. Derrick Henry is pretty much the only Titan that I'd want to throw in the lineup. Tannehill does have a nice floor. He hasn't been using his legs as much this season, uh, but typically he has a nice floor in tougher matchups because of his legs. We just haven't seen it a lot this year. So I'd caution with Ryan Tannehill as a super flex option. Probably look elsewhere if I had another option. But uh, Derrick Henry, Traylon Burke's good to go. When it comes to the Eagles side of the ball, you're definitely getting in Jalen Hurts and the receiving game. Uh, A.J. Brown is in a revenge game here against this Titans team. Who traded him? Who disrespected him? A.J. Brown is a fire. That might even be like a DFS play. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be on it, but the Titans are one of the worst secondaries in the league, it's, and they do not stop the pass at all. So him and Devontae Smith are comfortable plays. A.J. Brown is probably going to have at least a touchdown, uh, probably a disrespectful play at some point. On uh, the run game, I'm not too concerned. Miles Sanders has been an RB2. He's going to stay there. And I know we've seen like Kenneth Gainwell get in the end zone. We've seen uh, Boston Scott start to get carries. As the season goes on, I think they're going to incorporate him more, but I still think Miles Sanders is the only running back you can trust right now. Kenny Gainwell is too much of a dart throw. All right, moving on to Broncos and Ravens. Broncos and Ravens uh, are playing each other, and this is a, one of the, I think this is the lowest scoring matchup. We've seen the Broncos in back-to-back -back weeks have the lowest scoring matchup of the week, 38 and a half points, and the Ravens are favored by eight and a half. So uh, this screams comfortable Ravens win. The Broncos side of the ball, the secondary for the Ravens has gotten better over the weeks, but I'm okay with starting Cortland Sutton. That's it. We're waiting for the return of Jerry Judy. If it happens this week, um, then maybe I bump up Jerry Judy a little bit, but I'm probably not starting Jerry Judy until I see him on the field. Russ is not a start. If you can avoid it, don't start Russell Wilson, obviously. Um, in this run game, right, everybody's asked me about Latavius Murray. Is he a go? We've actually seen Mike Boone has come off of IR and is now on the practice. He's got in a full practice this week. So Mike Boone, I just dropped it on TikTok. He's a guy that I would expect to come in and take over some of the passing game role for this team, while Latavius Murray is going to be more of the red zone and short yardage guy. So I can see this being a split backfield and Mike Boone having a role in this team. So in 12-man leagues or deeper, if you're looking for running back depth, I know I was. Um, Mike Boone is a deep league play. He's not projected for a lot of points. He could either be a watch and see or maybe a pickup for your team. And then when it comes to the Ravens side of the ball, the receivers, the, the Broncos have been shutting down receivers all year long. So we're not doing anything with the Broncos receivers. Um, but... Uh, I'm sorry, with the Ravens receivers, Devin DuVernay, Demarcus Robinson, I'm not interested in them. Uh, we can fire up, of course, Lamar and, and Mark Andrews. Those guys are must, must fire ups no matter what. But this run game, right? Denver gives up a lot to the running backs. This isn't, the run game is kind of confusing. Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, both expected to be there. Kenyon Drake has been involved. So I would stay away from all options in the running backs, uh, in the Ravens running back room. I'm not starting J.K. Dobbins until we see what he looks like. Gus Edwards until he gets a more secure role. And Kenyon Drake is probably going to be involved in the passing game, but it looks like a three-headed monster. And they're probably going to be running the rock too. So... Although I have my concerns, I'm sure one of them will get in the end zone. I'm not sure who. You can take your chances if you want. I'd avoid it. And then also, yes, good point there, quads. Uh, Lamar is a little bit banged up as well. So what looks like normally a, a full go, a full send when it comes to starting Lamar Jackson, you have to. But just know that the upside isn't there. I can see them limiting his, his running ability this week. And like I mentioned, that point total sitting at 38 and a half for a reason. They're going to lean on the run game. And I don't expect a lot from the passing game. But Lamar is one of those guys, unless you just have a rock solid option, you have to play him. Good call on there. Uh, Browns and Texans. The return. The return of Deshaun Watson to Houston, man. I don't want to talk about any of the other stuff, but it's it's been a long time since we've seen him on the field. I am not starting Deshaun Watson. Not starting Deshaun Watson. Uh, if you can avoid it, there has to be another option. See what he looks like. Probably going to be a little bit rusty. Has only had the practice window open for a few weeks now. Uh, in preseason, his... His games in preseason were a little bit overblown as far as how bad he was. He was throwing darts. Uh, Anthony Schwartz had like three drops in preseason. So it's not like he looked terrible. It just wasn't sharp. And I can see that happening again. Uh, right now, his total, his over-under total for yardage is set at like 230. 
So it's not like it's going to be a dynamic game against Houston where they're probably going to get up in this game as well, focus on the run game. I do expect Nick Chubb to have a day. Nick Chubb will have himself a day. They're going to use the run game a lot. I can see Kareem Hunt uh, maybe even getting a score in this game, but I don't trust Kareem Hunt in my lineup. Um, but, yeah, the pass catchers, uh, typically the Houston Texans do a pretty good job against quarterbacks and wide receivers just because most teams run the football against them. So lower day is expected for Amari Cooper, DPJ. I would start D- I would start Amari Cooper, probably stay away from DPJ this week just because of the matchup, and, I, and this is going to be a run-heavy game. For the Browns, um, David and Joku, you don't have much uh, much better options at tight end. Go ahead and get them in your lineups. But yes, this is going to be a, a, a run heavy script for the Browns. On the Texan side of the ball, um, we've been seeing Nico Collins get a lot more involved in the passing game. His uh, his targets have been like nine, seven, ten. There, that's the numbers you want to see. It's just been equaling out to like forty yards a game, which kind of sucks. But in PPR leagues, he's been around double digits over the last three weeks. So uh, they made a focus with Brandon Cooks requesting a trade and probably not returning to this team next year. There's been a point of emphasis with Nico Collins getting involved, and he's looked good, even though with Kyle Allen starting, uh, it's somebody that I would get in as a flex play in twelve man leagues. Nico Collins is startable in in 12, 14, 16 man leagues, but that's about it. Um, when it comes to the run game, Damian Pierce is probably going to get phased out of this as well uh, at some point. Again, like he hasn't had very many carries over the last three weeks. Um, I just if he doesn't get a touchdown, he just he kind of hurts your team. I've talked about players like that. He is one of them. And uh, for the quarterback, we're not starting Kyle Allen at all. Like Kyle Allen is not a play in any shape or format. I can see Cleveland defense doing pretty well. They just don't score a lot of touchdowns. Cleveland Browns don't, don't force a lot of like touchdown turnovers, if that makes sense. There's certain teams with aggressive schemes that force turnovers that go for touchdowns. Cleveland Browns don't typically do it. If they were going to do it, it'd be a game like uh, here against the Texans. All right, last one, then I'll get back into more questions here uh, before I get back into the last part of the game. Seahawks and Rams play, and this is going to be a fire up for Geno, DK, Tyler Lockett, and, of course, Kenneth Walker. The total sitting at 41. They should blow this Rams team out, even in the division game on the road. Fire up all of your Seahawk options. Uh, Noah fan, I'm, I'm not really interested in, obviously, but uh, for the Seahawks, go ahead and fire up most of your options there. And then on the Rams side of the ball, like, there's nobody I want to start. Kyron Williams has been a, a question that's been thrown my way. Kyron Williams or Cam Akers. And it looks like Cam Akers has a lot of the short yardage stuff. And Kyron Williams is going to be more involved in the passing game, probably increasing his role as the season goes on. He's looked good as a blocker. Seems like he understands the schemes pretty well. So I like what I've seen out of Kyron Williams. I'm ready to put him in the almost flex category. I wouldn't start him if I had to, uh, if I didn't have to. But Kyron Williams is in the almost flexible category. I can see him having a 10 to 12 point day. The receivers, I'm not starting any of them. Against a tough secondary, Seahawks secondary, uh, I'm avoiding Van Jefferson. Tyler Higby is is questionable, tight end at best. But I'm avoiding these Rams options. Uh, the secondary is good. I can see the, the Seahawks playing, playing these Rams tough, man. It's going to be a tough day for the Rams. All right. On to some questions, guys, and then I will get back into – the last five games, if, you have, if you're on TikTok and you missed all the games, the whole episode's on YouTube. I'll break it down game by game and go through uh, and, and break it down, timestamp it for you so you guys can check on your players. Hopefully this has been helpful, guys. Um, but yes, I'm going to get into some of these questions. Now, back to the top of the show. All right. Justin uh, answered this one already. Sutton and London for Keenan Allen. This is a heavy price to pay, but I would go get Keenan Allen. Wide receiver one. Go ahead and do it. Should I start Justin Herbert or Sean Watson this week? I think Justin Herbert in a plus matchup uh, for the Chargers is a must start. Go ahead and get him in your lineups. Deshaun Watson, uh, like I said, you can wait a week if you have Herbert. Flex Kamara Pittman this week. You're still flexing Alvin Kamara. Derek Carr or Jimmy G. I'm going with Derek Carr in this one. Uh, What's good, Justin? Mr. Scampers. Long time no see, man. How you doing, dog? Uh, what are your thoughts on someone in my league dropping Lamar for White, Mike White? What? Somebody dropped Lamar Jackson for Mike White? Are you kidding me? Go get Lamar. Pick him up. Tua or Watson? You're going with Tua. Do I start Geno or Deshaun Watson? Start Geno. Mike Williams, Christian Kirk, or Debo Samuel? I'm going with Debo until I see Mike Williams is good to go. Uh, Pierre Swift, White or Lockett? Give me White out of those options. Juju or B-Rub? Give me B-Rub. B-Rob out of those options. Zay Jones or Terry McLaurin? Give me Terry McLaurin, even though he's got a tough matchup. 
Uh, Juju or Pickens? Give me Pickens. Christian Kirk or Watson? Is that is that uh, Christian Watson? Give me Christian Watson for the upside. Gerald Everett or Jawan Johnson? Pick your choice. Tight end is ugly this year. Tight end is super ugly. If Najee is out, is Warren a start? Absolutely he is. Check Gus. Uh, yeah, Gus, Gus should be in there. Uh, Kamara White or Montgomery? Give me Rashad White. Do I trade for Keenan Allen or is Mike Williams better? Keenan Allen is better than Mike Williams in PPR leagues. In standard leagues, you can go with Mike Williams. Uh, Dalvin Cook, Ayuk, or Garrett Wilson for the flex? Go with Dalvin Cook, Garrett Wilson, then Ayuk. Should I trade Amari Cooper? Nah, go ahead and hold Amari Cooper. He'll be good. They just got to get some things worked out there in, uh, in Cleveland. I have Mahomes in need of a good wide receiver one. What should I do? Uh, depends on the rest of your team, man. If you could trade for a wide receiver one, I'd do it for – it better be a top five wide receiver from giving up Mahomes. Is Chase and White a luck? Uh, I don't know if Chase, is, Chase should be playing in White. I'm thinking you're talking about Rashad White. Uh, both of those guys should be a lock for your lineup, yes. Cole Komet or Tyler Conklin? Ugh, ugly. Uh, tight end's ugly right now. I got another play for you guys. Jelani Woods is somebody I'm going to get in my lineup. I like what I saw out of him. The coaching scheme is uh, looking like they're going to get him involved. He played 64% of the snaps. I'll talk about him a little bit later. But uh, if I had to go with one of the two, I'm going with Tyler Conklin. Eckler for Kelsey and Pollard. Uh, if you have the running backs to support it, get it done. 331. All right. Uh, Hawkinson or David Njoku? Give me TJ Hawkinson. Uh, Dan Campbell said... Swift getting, I like it, getting more this week. Does that make him a start? Plus, what's your YouTube? Guys, the YouTube is Justin Henry Show. Check the link in my bio. It's the very first link. Hop on over, subscribe. I have daily episodes, bookmarked, uh, waiver pickups, everything. So go ahead and check it out. But yes, I've, I've, I've been talking about Swift on this show. I said I think he's going to have a bigger role as the record gets worse. Uh, I like Swift. I've, I've been liking Swift when everybody else was saying he's a backup or to trade him. Thoughts on the lineup? Mahomes, Barkley, JT, Lamb, Higgins, AJ Brown, Hawkinson. My bad, bro. It's all good. No, I think this lineup is solid. This looks like a, a, a eight-man league. So, yeah, that looks like a good lineup to me. I have Pat's defense. Not sure about starting him against the Bills. Uh, drop him for Browns defense or Green Bay. Should I stash Pat's defense? Keep him. They're, I want to say they're the number one defense in the league right now. Pat's defense, uh, defense is. But I would pick up another defense for this week. Probably Browns defense against Houston. Just because we don't know if uh, Justin Fields is coming back or not. All right, a couple more and then I'm getting back into the games. Trade Wood, KPJ, and Drew for Kristaps, Levine, and Jordan Clarkson. Uh, it, the, I like getting the Levine side. I'd probably just stick with Wood, KPJ, and Drew for right now, to be honest. I... I, that's close though, Lev. I'll probably stick with the KPJ side and, and Christian Wood side. Christian Wood's been getting more involved lately, and you love to see it. Ayuk or Keenan Allen? Go with Keenan Allen. Swift, White, Pacheco. I'm going with White, then Swift. Uh, Pacheco, I'm not playing. Fields, if he plays, or Juno. I, if uh, Fields does play, I'm starting Fields over Juno. All right, last one. Should I trade Jeff Wilson for DeAndre Swift? It's a pretty lateral move. Jeff Wilson's been involved, but you know there's a hot hand approach for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I would prefer DeAndre Swift for the upside, but I wouldn't be mad at Jeff Wilson either. It's, it's probably closer than I'm, I'm giving off. Uh, Tua are watching this week. I'm nervous with Tua facing Niners defense. Don't be, don't be nervous about Tua. It's not. Listen, that Niners defense is tough. But what they're building in Miami is a lot scarier. I'm going to talk about that game right now, guys. Niners at Dolphins. And, yes, the Niners are one of the best defenses in the league, the best defense in the league, I'd say, and going up against probably the best offense not named Kansas City Chiefs in the league. I'm still firing up Tua, Jalen Waddell, Tyreek Hill, all going in the lineups. Jeff Wilson, RB2 or flex, very fine play there. Raheem Mostert, a questionable flex play in 12-man leagues. Uh, he's expected to play. It sounds like he's coming back, and he's ready for this matchup. The Dolphins have been talking a lot of shit. Like, they've been talking. Mike McDaniel, uh, former Niners coach. Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert, former Niners running backs. It's the it's the the Niners South down there in, uh, in Miami. So they've been talking a lot. Debo, Raheem Mostert going back and forth. So I know there's some uh, slightly bad blood there, I expect, Jeff Wilson have a day. Raheem Mostert probably does well as well. So, um, But Tua, Tyreek, you're not benching these guys, man. Jalen Waddell, they're must plays. Uh, from the Niners side of the ball, I am a little concerned about Jimmy Garoppolo dealing with the slight injury. Uh, normally this Miami Dolphins team gives up a lot of points to the quarterbacks. So I think he'll be okay. Debo is a fire up. Uh, and I think and Brandon Ayuk is as well. For the run game, Christian McCaffrey, go ahead and get him in. There's a lot of talks about who is the backup running back for the Niners now with Eli Mitchell out. 
six to eight weeks. And on waivers, we talked about guys like Tyrion Davis Price and Jordan Mason. So if I was looking at running back options and I'm looking for who can be the number two, who can get a touchdown, it's Tyrion Davis Price. Um, when, when the backup running back spot was in question before, it was TDP until he got hurt. Jordan Mason was the super teams, uh, super teams, special teams play, right? And that's why he was on the roster because there was two healthy running backs ahead of him in Christian McCaffrey and Eli Mitchell. Now that they need to depend on the run game, we saw in, in TDP's last role as a backup, he had 14 carries in week two. I think we see a lot more of that, especially with Christian McCaffrey banged up. And he's a red zone threat as well. They will use him. He's a battering ram. TDP is a battering ram. So in 12-man leagues or deeper, especially with the Niners' soft playoff schedule, he's the only backup right now and Christian McCaffrey's hurt. I would go get TDP. He seems like the kind of guy that could uh, have multiple touchdown games at times. So... Uh, when it comes to receivers, you're getting them all fired up. George Kittle is a fire up as well this game. Niners passing game options are, are must stays in the lineup right now. But there for the running backs, it's Christian McCaffrey in a waiver right now, waiver bench spot on TDP, and, and let's see what happens. Uh, if you had to grab one off of this, a good question. TDP or Jalen Warren? I'm more interested in Jalen Warren because he catches passes. Tyrion Davis Price is not a is not a pass catcher, even if he got the starting gig. Say CMC was out this week, uh, he's not going to catch a lot of passes for you. The guy that's going to catch passes is probably going to be Jordan Mason, or maybe they bring up Tevin Coleman from uh, from the practice squad. So that's the way I would deal with this backfield. TDP is more of a uh, a Damian Pierce type of runner, where he's going to be north and south, battering ram used in the red zone. Think of him more so in that manner than like Jalen Warren is going to be, if he doesn't score a touchdown, he can still get you three, four catches in a given week. So very good question there. All right, Chiefs and Bengals. Chiefs and Bengals. A repeat of the AFC Championship. You must watch this game. A couple must watch games this week, dude. Dolphins and Niners looks like it could be a Super Bowl preview. Chiefs, Bengals, potentially, like we're getting a rematch of the AFC uh, Championship. You love to see it. So, uh, all Chiefs are a go uh, when you talk about Mahomes, Kelsey, normal stuff for the Chiefs. Even though the Bengals have one of the tougher secondaries, uh, fantasy-wise in the league, they they do slow down opposing quarterbacks and wide receivers. You still get them in the game. Juju's a fire up. MBS is a deeper league play. And then when it comes to the running backs, I'm fading all of the running backs this game. Fading Pacheco, fading Melvin Gordon, newly added, f- fading Jarek McKinnon. I'm not touching this, this Chiefs backfield. Uh, with Mel- with Melvin Gordon, a lot of people were saying, hey, we don't know his value. Pacheco has the, the lead back roles. What do we do with Melvin Gordon? He's going to fit nicely into that CEH role. They'll use him sometimes in the red zone, mostly a change of, pack t- uh, change of pace type back. I don't expect him to take away a whole lot of carries, but he will have a role for this team. Th- think six to eight touches any given week. Jarek McKinnon's involved in the passing game. Isaiah Pacheco is going to be the guy between the 20s. That's just how this team rolls, man. So I don't trust anybody in the Chiefs' backfield for this matchup. Uh, when it comes to Cincinnati Bengals, you're, of course, going to get Joe Burrow in your lineups. Uh, Chiefs give up a ton of ton of points to opposing quarterbacks and wide receivers because they got to keep up points-wise. 52.5 points, the highest scoring total of the week. So we know there should be fireworks between these two teams. T. Higgins is a go. If Jamar Chase plays, you are not benching Jamar Chase. If you have Jamar Chase, put him in your lineups. He's a guy you want to have in your lineups no matter what. Tyler Boyd is more of a uh, of a flex play in 14-man leagues. I'm not interested in starting him in 12, 10, or 8-man leagues. 14 and 16-man leagues, you can get Tyler Boyd in for the upside. He will have a lower floor. Hayden Hurst is a, is a go at the tight end spot. He's probably a back end. Tight end one option for me this week. And then uh, for the Bengals, we got to see if Joe Mixon is uh, is going to play. He's expected to come back from his concussion return. So I would fire up Joe Mixon in all capabilities. Um, Samaji Ryan was a one-week thing. I'm not expecting much more from Samaji Ryan, even though he played decent in the last two weeks, uh, especially last week with um, with Joe Mixon out. I'm not playing uh, Samaji Ryan. If I could trade him in a league, I would. Send him to somebody else who doesn't know that he's about to go back to the bench. All right, last three games here. We got Chargers and Raiders. Uh, you are firing up Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen, 100%. Austin Eckler is always a stay in your lineups, but you're definitely firing up Keenan Allen in your lineups. And the return of Mike Williams, if he gets back on the field and he and he is uh, active for this game, I would still play him. The Raiders are terrible. 
defensively in the secondary. They give up a lot of points. We saw Seahawks game last week was a very high scoring matchup. So go ahead and get your chargers in the lineups. Um, one name to note, Joshua Kelly is now back as the, the back end running back too for this team. So if anything were to happen to, to Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly is the guy they've been trying to get involved. He's been hurt throughout the year, uh, but he's a deeper league, like 16 man type of running back. If you're looking for like high upside running backs, for the fantasy playoffs if injuries happen. I'm not a big handcuff guy, but that's the handcuff right now. Uh, and then Gerald Everett is just too inconsistent to, tr to trust. Even against the Raiders, who I think would have, he could have a, a nice matchup there with the return of Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. I ain't expecting much from Gerald Everett. So uh, on the Raiders side of the ball, obviously Devontae Adams is a full send. Derek Carr is a full send. Josh Jacobs is dealing with an injury and may not be playing this week. Very important to note. Um, there's a 50-50 chance that Josh Jacobs plays this week. If you have him in your lineups, make sure you have another option that you can start. If you're looking for Raiders options to start, the player that I would be looking at is Amir Abdullah, who we've seen get involved in the passing game and the run game over the last two weeks. Amir Abdullah would be the guy. I know there's a lot of people who are going to say Zamir White. Amir Abdullah is the guy I'd be interested in if I absolutely had to have a Raiders running back and Josh Jacobs was out. Mac Hollins is a flexible play this week against the Chargers. Mac Hollins has been good ever since uh, Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller have been out. Mac Hollins has been very serviceable as a flex option. And Foster Moreau should also see himself uh, a pretty good game for himself. This total sitting at 50 points. A nice total for Raiders and Chargers. Expect fireworks. Colts and Cowboys. And then I got Saints and Bucks right after that. And then I'll be questions for the last 15 minutes of the show here. Uh, Colts and Cowboys. The Cowboys have one of the better defenses in the league. So I'm sitting Matt Ryan. He's not a start even in super flex leagues. I'm sitting Matt Ryan very cautiously starting Michael Pittman. If you have another option, he's a concern for me. I, I think he'll still get a little bit of volume, but he's a concern. Uh, Alec Pierce is not a start at any point right now. 14 man, 16 man league. Even it's tough to start Alec Pierce right now. And we saw Paris Campbell have a nice role for this team. Uh, when Matt Ryan's been quarterback, and then just went ghost on Monday night. So I have concerns about starting Paris Campbell this week because Jelani Woods, even though this is a top 10 team against the tight ends in the Dallas Cowboys, Jelani Woods is, I don't like saying this, but I feel like he has the makings of being like a league winning tight end type of player. Tight end is a, is a graveyard right now. And Matt Ryan has been known to look at his number one option and his tight end. In his time in Atlanta, he did it, right? And so when I look at Jelani Woods, the new coach is Jeff Saturday. He played 64% of the snaps last week, which to me, over Mo Ali Cox, who's not bad in his own right, which to me seems like they're trying to develop young talent. They're trying to get playmakers and open up things for the outside. So Jelani Woods is probably just chilling on your waivers in 12-man leagues. 10-man for sure. He's somebody, if I had... If I had Greg Dolchich, if I had Evan Ingram, if I had Noah Fant, if I had Tyler Conklin, if I had Dawson Knox, if I had Tyler Higby, this is a guy I'd be looking to pick up. Jelani Woods, make sure he's not floating around. If you have somebody that's droppable on your team in 12-man or deeper, make sure Jelani Woods isn't floating out there. For the Dallas side of the ball, this this any this Colts secondary has been tough. Stephon Gilmore has been shut down for the most part, but you still got to play C.D. Lamb. You're still going to play Dak Prescott. Michael Gallup would be a sit for me this week if you were considering flexing him. He's looked better as of late, but I would sit him in this matchup against the Colts. Uh, but Zeke is a full send, and Tony Pollard is of course a flex option. 43 and a half points. I'm not expecting a whole lot of points, but this should be a, a nice, comfortable Dallas win. Uh, so get Tony, get Zeke in there. We know he's using the red zone, short yardage stuff. And get Tony Pollard in as a flex with high upside. All right, last one. Last one I want to talk about, guys, and then I'll get into the questions. I see them coming in here on TikTok. I see them on, on YouTube, and normally I'll get to more. Uh, tomorrow will just be a questions-only show. Um, but, yes, Saints and Bucks. Uh, this is a low total, too, 40 and a half points. Um, so I'm not expecting a whole lot of points here. Andy Dalton, I would if, if you're in a super flex league, you almost have to play him at this point. But I would bench Andy Dalton if I had better options. Alvin Kamara. There's been a lot of concern about Alvin Kamara's value. Um, and people are asking if they should trade him, if he's still startable. And we've seen him with under 10 points in a three out of the four, last four weeks. To me, I'm still starting Alvin Kamara. It's just tough because... 
Taysom Hill has been used in the red zone. We've seen Andy Dalton not look his way in the red zone, and they haven't really been running Alvin Kamara in the red zone. And when they have, he's been fumbling the football. Another tough matchup, uh, tough matchup against Tampa Bay. If you have one of the hot options, the Kenneth Walkers, the Rashad Whites, I'm getting him in over Kamara, who also has a bye next week. If you're thinking about trading Alvin Kamara, trade him as a running back one. During the fantasy playoffs, he'll still be that. This week, though, he's more of a high upside running back two with kind of a low floor. So I am not in a rush to start Alvin Kamara over more, uh, you know, more stable options. But for most teams, you probably have to start him. So get him in your lineups. Uh, Chris Olave is a go, even though it's a tougher matchup against Tampa Bay's defense. You got to start Chris Olave. I'm not starting Jarvis Landry or Jawan Johnson in this matchup. Uh, for the Tampa Bay side of the ball, Rashad White is the backfield right now. Leonard Fournette coming off of an injury. I don't expect him to get his normal workload, his normal touches. So you fire up Rashad White. He's he's still running back one against the Saints team to me, who is a little bit better at stopping the pass than they are at stopping the run. Mike Evans historically has had bad matchups against Marcus Lattimore. Or, excuse me, Marshawn Lattimore. Uh, they're in the secondary. So uh, I am playing Mike Evans. Just temper your expectations. No big games. We've seen him have decent games, even against. Against Lattimore, so go ahead and get him in there. And then uh Godwin is also a fire up. Julio Jones is a deeper league play. I think we can see a score from him this game. Julio Jones is a deeper 14 man, 16 man type of play. Pick up in 12 man leagues. Um, and then yes, and then Leonard Fournette. I'm benching Leonard Fournette until we see what his role is on this team. If they're not using him in the red zone, I'm not interested. I think they'll get him back in there. But to me, Rashad White's a starter until further notice. Tom Brady, you got to start him. Uh, it's not a sexy play, but he's more of a back-end QB1, high-end QB2 play this week. All right, guys. I'm going to answer some questions here. We got about 15 minutes left on the show. I'm going to go ahead and answer the questions that have come in so far on YouTube and then also answer some more here from TikTok. Guys, if you follow, uh, if you don't follow, make sure you guys follow the page. And then if you have not subscribed to the YouTube, it's Justin Henry Show on YouTube. All right, Knight White Patterson. Uh, Knight White Patterson, Latavius Murray for the RB2 spot. Give me Rashad White. Thoughts on Hollywood Brown the rest of the season? He's a high upside wide receiver three. What's a good waiver wire tight end? I just talked about it. Jelani Woods. Jelani Woods. Pierce or Kyron Williams? Give me a uh, Pierce still. Kamara, Miles Sanders, or B Rob? I go with Kamara, then Miles Sanders, then B Rob. It's close. Flex Zonovan Knight or Antonio Gibson? Both ugly. I'd look for somebody else. Probably Zonovan Knight just for the role. Uh, thoughts on fitting Traylon Burks into the lineup. If you can get him in there as a wide receiver three, go ahead and do it. I think it's uh he's a he's a lock for lineups right now. Deshaun Watson or Geno? Give me Geno. Sit Pittman for Christian Watson. I do it. Go ahead and get Christian Watson in your lineup. Thielen or Myers? Uh Thielen or Jacoby Myers. I'm probably playing Jacoby Myers. Just not a lot of upside there. Thoughts on Bam Knight. I think Zonovan Knight is uh he's not playable yet. Especially if Michael Carter does play this week. If Michael Carter doesn't play, he's flexible in 12 man leagues or deeper. I try to keep him out of eight or 10 man leagues. Uh, TJ Hawkinson for Sutton and Traylon Burks. It's a pretty clean swap receiver for tight end. I'd rather have the tight end right now. Who can I start over Saquon? You're not starting either of those guys over Saquon. Incoming Chubb career game. I can see Nick Chubb having a big game. All right. Uh, White or Wilson at QB? You're talking about Russell Wilson. I'm going with Mike White over Russell Wilson. I'm not starting Russell Wilson if possible. Traded Burks, Antonio Gibson, and Swift for K9. Did I overpay? Uh, you have to overk for K9 at this point. I would consider this a slight overpay, but if you don't need the depth, go ahead and do it. Think Mixon is playing. Yes, I think Mixon is playing, and I would drop Samaji P. Ryan for Jalen Warren. I would do that. AJ Dillon or Juju at the flex? Give me Juju. Any recommendations on who to get at the wide receiver position? Hopefully I mentioned a name that could be helpful here uh, throughout the show. So if I didn't, give me a few names you're looking at on the waivers. Choose two, Antonio Gibson, Gus Edwards, and Paris Campbell. I, I, Antonio Gibson is the only one I really feel comfortable starting. I probably would still go with Paris Campbell over Gus Edwards. Start two, Pickens, Jacoby Myers, uh, Joshua Palmer, Zay Jones, Rashad White. Rashad White for sure is in there. Next one I'm going with George Pickens. Drake London or Terry McLaurin? Give me Terry McLaurin still. Even though I like the matchup for, for Drake London, I'm still starting Terry McLaurin. A.J. Brown or Keenan Allen? You are not sitting A.J. Brown this week. You're not sitting A.J. Brown against the Titans. My guy, CEO of Hindsight, what's good, dog? Uh, is ETN good to start? I would start ETN this week uh, if he's cleared to go. He's questionable coming into the matchup. Still think he's a good start. Uh, Thielen, okay, flex. I would prefer not to start Thielen. I just talked about it on the YouTube show. I don't think it's a very good start this week. The Vikings going up against a uh, very tough Jets secondary in a slower-paced game. 
Start Watson, Christian Watson, yes. Der uh, Deshaun Watson, I try to avoid if possible. Uh, like I said, J Deshaun Watson's point total, uh, yardage total is sitting at like 230 right now. So I'm sure he'll rush for about 40, 50 yards as well. Big Dog Myers or Pittman? I'm going with Pittman still. Terry Burke, Zay Jones. I'm sitting Zay Jones. Are you scared of Chase or White's value with Lenny back? Uh, I'm not scared of Chase and I'm not scared of Rashad White until until I see Leonard Fournette take his normal workload back. I'm not scared of starting Rashad White. He has a very uh, Brady-friendly uh, game. They took him in the third round. This team is going to use Rashad White, and he's been playing well. So until he stops playing well, I'm keeping him in the lineup. He's a back-end RB1 at worst, a uh, high-end running back too. Uh, Rashad White, Burks, Pacheco, Sutton at the flex. Give me Rashad White. Uh, hey, Justin, I know you're not doing this, but can you slide one for me? San Francisco defense versus Ravens defense for the rest of the season. Please, Justin, you are literally the GOAT. I try to be. I try to be. I try to be the best that I can. Uh, Niners defense versus Ravens defense rest of the year. I think Ravens have more plus matchups that I like. San Francisco has a tough sled uh, coming with uh, the playoff matchups. I don't know the matchups off the top of my head, though, so I don't want to tell you something that'd be wrong. I would probably go with uh, with the San Francisco defense, though. They're just the better defense overall. I have to take a look at the matchups. I know the Ravens have really good matchups, though, so if you want to post the matchups down there or post it in the episode after a post, uh, if you post this question, I'll answer it. I'll look up the matchups and give you an answer, all right? Is Rondell Moore a drop? Yes, get rid of Rondell Moore. I'm not, I'm not starting him. Ayuk Rashad White, Zay Jones at the flex this week. Give me Rashad White. Opinions on Evans this week. Uh, tough matchup against the Saints. Still starting him. Is Swift an okay start? I've been talking about it for weeks. Swift has still been getting double-digit points in, in your league. So in PPR leagues, you got to start him. A.J. Dillon or Juju at the flex? Give me Juju. Is Garrett Wilson a stud now? Uh, he's more of a wide receiver three than a stud, with, especially with Mike White going. He's going to be matched with the dependent. The Bears are a shitty team, so he played well against a shitty team. He's more of a wide receiver three. Tua or Fields? I'm going with Tua. I gotta see. I want to see what Fields looks like on the field, obviously, no pun intended. Uh, but Tua, even though it's a tough matchup against the Niners, the offense is still explosive. Burrow or Herbert this week? You're going with Herbert. Against the Raiders, you got to go Herbert. McKenzie or Debo? You cannot ask me that question, Doug. You can't ask me that question. It's Debo all the way. I don't care what McKenzie did last week. Got Mixon for Amari Cooper and Deontay Foreman. I think that's a good a good move, man. Thanks for the advice. I got you. Should I try to flip CMC to a different RB or rock with CMC with the knee injury? I, I don't think you're going to get fair value for CMC right now. And with Elijah Mitchell out, to me, that does help CMC's value, especially in the passing game. So keep CMC. Just there is a little bit of concern about the injury. Can you give me some QBs to start? I just went through 45 minutes of games. I hope you got a QB to start out of those, my man. Start Elijah Moore or Drake Lennon. Give me Drake Lennon. Elijah Moore is very close, though. He's just less of a threat to score than Drake Lennon is, even though the Falcons ain't scored enough, a lot of points. Steelers have been giving up top 10 yardage to uh, yardage and points to uh, the receiver position. Pierce or uh, Zonovan Knight this week? I'm still going Damian Pierce. Kenneth Walker or Aaron Jones? Give me Kenneth Walker. Thoughts on Juju? He's a low floor wide receiver three. Would you start Miami's defense against the Niners? I'd try to find somebody else. Is Najee playing? I don't expect Najee to play, personally. I'm not, hey, I'm not a doctor, but I don't expect Najee to play this week. I think Jalen Warren gets to start. Keeper league, keep two, Burks, Rashad White, K-9. Depends on where you drafted him. Uh, if it's just that face value, I'm keeping K-9 and Rashad White. Only thing is Leonard Fournette has a three-year deal, so I can see him being around, like sticking around next year. But PPR leagues, I, I like Rashad White's value. Burks is just so high up. You know what? I'm going to change that take right here, mid-value. Give me Burks and K-9 because if Brady leaves or if Leonard Fournette sticks around and takes red zone touches, I don't like third-round draft pick Rashad White. Give me Burks who the team's invested in and K-9. Hopefully that helped, my man. Uh, Juju or Pittman? I'm rocking with Pittman this week. Keenan Allen or Godwin? Still give me Keenan Allen. Um, matchup, against, matchup against the Raiders, I like it. Thanks for the help. Good, I got you. Yes, sir, I got you. Keenan or Godwin? Uh, give me Keenan. Godwin's close, so we saw he had a hell of a week last week, and he looks like he's all the way back from the injury, so I'm not mad at it. Who is, what are some names to pick up from the waiver wire? My guy, Kellen, I just talked about uh, a couple names during this show, but I also just did a waiver wire episode yesterday, and it's bookmarked with top waiver wire quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. So if you check yesterday's episode, you should be able to find it. It says waiver uh, week 13 waiver wire right on the, on the screen cap. So... I went through it. It was only about 15 minutes, so you have time to like put it on 2X and just watch it. 2X speed, and you'll be good. Uh, who do I start? Latavius Murray, Gus, Singletary, Pierce, or B-Rob? Uh, I like B-Rob or Pierce the most out of these guys. Give me Pierce, then B-Rob. 
What do you think of Knight? I just talked about Zonovan Knight. I think he'll be okay. He's more of a flex. I'm not really interested in starting him in anything under a 12-man league. Watson or Prescott or Fields? Give me uh, Justin Fields if he plays, Dak Prescott next. Prescott's still good enough to start over Watson. London, Nico Collins, or B-Rob? London, Nico Collins, or B-Rob? Uh, give me London out of those three options, then B-Rob, then Nico. Nico's close, though. He's, he's getting the looks. He's just not getting the production. We're trading Henry for Devontae Adams and Jeff Wilson. Yes, if you need the receiver, go ahead and do it. Thoughts on Kamara rest of the season? I think he'll be better in fantasy playoffs than he is going to be this week. And he has a bye next week, so it's tough. If you have a winning record, keep him. If you have a losing record, get rid of him. Seattle defense or, Bear, or Browns defense this week? Seahawks. Go Seahawks against the Rams. They, they get more turnovers and sacks. Uh, let's see. I already clinched playoff spot, 7-5. Need to know who's droppable at this point. Pierce or CPAT was thinking of picking up Slayton or Burks. I'd stay away from Slayton. Burks would be the pickup. If you're looking for upside, the play would probably be dropping Damian Pierce. He just doesn't have a lot of upside, and his Texans team isn't going to be running the football a whole lot second half. Hey, bro, I wouldn't drop Damian Pierce if possible, but if, if I was going to make a move, it'd be Pierce for Burks if I needed a receiver. Hey, bro, started loving the streams and came back from yesterday. Uh, out of these guys, who should I try to trade uh, for Chubb? Devontae Adams, Waddle Higgins, CMC Swift. Uh, if I had Chubb, I would be okay with probably CMC, Waddle, and Devontae Adams in PPR leagues. That's about it. I, would keep, I wouldn't do it for Higgins or Swift. Uh, Garrett Wilson, A.J. Brown, or Saquon pick two. I'm going with Saquon and A.J. Brown. Uh, Gus Edwards or Kareem Hunt. I don't love Gus Edwards or Kareem Hunt this week. Both of them aren't really recommended plays. If I had to pick one, my hunch says Kareem Hunt. Both of these guys have low floors. Is David Njoku startable for playoffs? Absolutely he is. He's got tough matchups, but don't worry about it. Tight end's been a graveyard this year. I would start him. Uh, Higgins or Olave. Give me T. Higgins against the Chiefs. What can I get for Alvin Kamara? I need a wide receiver. Get a top 10 wide receiver if you can. Rashad White or Godwin? Give me floor with Rashad White. PPR leagues, I'm okay if you start Godwin. If I had to pick one, I'm going with Rashad White. Uh, Pick between Dolphins and Niners. Don't make me do that, man. Don't make me do that to my own team. I'm actually going with the Dolphins. Even though the Niners are at home and that's my squad, I think the Dolphins win this game. No homer shit. I give you real, real advice. No homer shit. I think the Dolphins win. Start three, Lamb, Higgins, A.J. Brown, Christian Kirk. I'm benching Christian Kirk. Benching Christian Kirk. Start Zay Jones, Mac Hollins, Demarcus Robinson, or A.J. Dillon. It'd probably be Mac Hollins would be the play uh, for the consistency, for the floor. Upside would be Zay Jones. Start Mike Evans or Brandon Ayuk. I'm still going with Mike Evans. Uh, do I start Damian Pierce over Kamara? No, I'm still starting Alvin Kamara over Damian Pierce. Jamal Williams, Rashad White, or Ty Johnson. Give me Rashad White all day. It's not close. Singletary or Drake London. Give me Drake London this week. Even though the floor is low, give me Drake London. Watson, Rodgers, or Justin Fields. Give me Justin Fields if he plays, Rodgers if he doesn't. I like you. You are good. Thank you, my man. Appreciate you, dog. Uh, start three, Lamb, Keenan Allen, DK, and Higgins. I'm benching, benching DK. And I actually, damn, I don't, those are all four solid options, bro. Yeah, I'm benching DK. Would you give up Connor and Christian Watson for Kenneth Walker to third? Yes, I would. I would get Kenneth Walker out, out of those three. Uh, how do you feel about Travis and should I pick up Hasty? I think Travis Etienne will play this week. He's questionable. Sounded like coach thought he would be good. It sounded like he wanted to play. I'm not really interested in Jermichael Hasty unless I'm in a 16-man league. Uh, start three, Walker Stevenson, uh, JT, Connor, and Aaron Jones. Give me JT, Walker, and Stevenson. Pickens or Cooper at the flex? I'm still going with uh, Cooper, even though I think Pickens has himself a day. I'm still going with Amari Cooper. He's a little bit safer. I think Pickens does have higher upside, so it wouldn't surprise me if he scored more, but his floor is a little bit lower as well. Give me Cooper, though. Just traded A.J. Brown, Jamal Williams, and Hollywood Brown for Justin Jefferson. Send all that shit away. Get the stud. Justin Jefferson locked in, loaded for the fantasy playoffs. I love it. Start Juju, Judy Palmer, Pickens. Go with Pickens out of those options. Uh, let's see. How do you feel about Deshaun Watson? I just talked about it on a, on uh, in depth on a TikTok, my most recent TikTok. I think he's a QB two right now with upside. He'll be matchup dependent playing in, in Cleveland for the rest of the year. So this week, I would start a better option. Wait till see what he looks like. Um, but for now, um, he's a QB two. Any news about OBJ? He's not expected to come back until late December. So I'm not really interested in OBJ in fantasy in dynasty. Go ahead and get him, but. Uh, 
in in fantasy. I'm not really interested in him in redraft. All right, last one for the day. Uh, do I start Kyron Williams or Gus Edwards? To me, I'm starting Kyron Williams from the pass catching upside. Not a lot of upside overall, um, but he has a safer floor, in my opinion, than Gus Edwards. Guys, I'll be on tomorrow to just do only questions before the Thursday night game. Make sure you guys watch. I just dropped it. This is a YouTube episode right now if you're watching on TikTok. This is a YouTube episode where I went over every single game. Fast forward it, watch it in 1.5x, but I'm going to bookmark it for you guys so you know which game is which, uh, and I'll be back tomorrow to answer a lot more questions, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you guys follow, subscribe to the YouTube. It's the Justin Henry Show, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.